Hello, I'm Richard Erickson. I'm a data scientist. Welcome to this DataCamp course on generalized linear models in R. During this course, you'll expand your regression toolbox by learning about generalized linear models, or GLMs for short. In chapter one, you'll see a review of linear models, learn about their limitations, and see how GLMs overcome some of these limitations. You'll also learn about Poisson regression, a type of GLM. In chapter two, you'll learn how to run binomial regressions. In chapter three, you'll learn about interpreting and plotting GLMs. In chapter four, you'll learn how to do multiple regressions with GLMs. Now, let's see how GLMs compare to other models you likely know. Linear models are a workhorse in data science and include common tools such as linear regression, ANOVAs, and t-tests. They're used for everything from sports analytics to chemistry. Personally, I use them daily to analyze data. LMs seek to explain variability by estimating coefficients for predictor variables. Intercepts model average or baseline effects of predictors. Slopes model changes caused by continuous predictors. The equation to predict y has an intercept, beta naught, slope, beta 1, x, and error epsilon. You can fit linear models in R with the LM function. Notice how linear models take the formula as the first input and data as the second. The tilde may be read as predicted by. For example, y is predicted by x. Linear models have important assumptions. By definition, the model examines linear relationships, such as the top example plot. Additionally, linear models assume residuals are normally distributed, such as the right plot. Furthermore, linear models work best with continuous response variables, such as data on the left. However, in real life, many data sets do not meet these assumptions. The chick weight data set works well with linear models. The data set compares the weights of chicks fed four different diets through times. I've grabbed the last observed weights and plotted the chick weights at the end of the study. In the next slide, you'll see how to fit a linear model to this data. The datasets package contains the chick weights dataset. I have saved the last observations as chick weight end. We'll see if diet explains weight. Specifically, a linear model can estimate if the second, third, and fourth diets differ from the first diet. Using the linear model function, we use the formula weight is predicted by diet with our chick weight end data. This model estimates a global intercept, intercept, which corresponds to the average weight of a chick receiving the first diet, as well as the differences for the other diets. In this case, diets 2, 3, and 4 had chicks with higher weights than diet 1 by the amounts shown on the screen. However, what about the other endpoints? For example, if we had survival or count data, what would we do? Survival is binary and counts are discrete. Neither of these are continuous. Hence, linear models are not a good choice. We need a new tool the generalized linear model. Linear models can be extended or generalized to become generalized linear models or GLMs for short. Specifically, GLMs can have non-normal errors or distributions, although there are limitations to possible distributions. For example, we can use a Poisson family for count data, which we will see in, later in this chapter. Or we can use a binomial family for binary data, such as survival data, which we'll see in chapter two. GLMs also have nonlinear link functions, which link the regression coefficients to the distributions and allow the linear model to be generalized. We will explore link functions in chapter two. GLMs are fit with the function GLM. Like LMs, GLMs have formulas and data as input, but also have a family input. The Gaussian family is how R refers to the normal distribution and is a default for a GLM. Also, if the family is Gaussian, then a GLM is the same as an LM. Now that you've seen a little bit about GLMs,